First things first, you get your potassium nitrate from a local dealer. Weirdly enough, it's becoming harder to find. Most places don't sell it anymore because apparently it's being used as a precursor to explosives. Good thing I bought mine to use as a fertilizer. So I'm still emptying my potassium nitrate into a container and out, out of the bag. Uh, this is pretty difficult to do with one hand and I'll show you I spilt a little bit later. You can sp skip later on into the video if you want to see the charcoal or sulfur production. And this is all just preparing ingredients for the end mixing of the gunpowder. Like, look at this. Okay, at least this wasn't hydrazine, but like, come on. As tough as it is, I put it back in the container and moved on. Potassium nitrate is slightly hygroscopic by nature, so it absorbs moisture from the air. To drive this off in the sample I had, I baked it at 195 Fahrenheit for about 30 minutes. These small chunks proved that there was some moisture driven off, so I threw it back in for a little bit more. Now that there's no moisture left in the potassium nitrate sample, I move it to a coffee grinder to start grinding it up. The goal is to get it to a very fine powder, such that when you pour it or you move it, it floats and you can see powder go everywhere. This is commonly referred to as air float, and it just pretty much means that you have a really fine grade of potassium nitrate. So here I am just grinding it up, and I do this with the rest of the sample. Something to note is that I cap it every time I finish a sample just so that excess moisture that I previously drove off doesn't get back in. Now I move into the charcoal part of this. And it's pretty self-explanatory. You just grab some charcoal, you grind it up. I'll go into a little bit more detail about why like graphite won't work. But the way that you know the charcoal is ready is if it easily just breaks off. So here I am just testing some wood on a fire pit that I had. Uh, I can tell the charcoal is a little bit wet because it rained, but you can see whether or not the charcoal is ready just by if it breaks off and it flakes. A good sign is all the dust that you see in the air. Carbon can be arranged in many different configurations. Just here is an example. A is coal, B is graphite, C is diamond, D are fullerenes, E is a nanotube, and F is graphene. The problem with all of these is that they have strong carbon to carbon bonds, as you see in the coal or graphene or anywhere else. However, in wood, you have strands of microfibrils, which are pretty much just threads of cellulose, bonded together by water. So when it's heated up, the water is driven off and it shrinks. And in the individual strands of microfibrils or cellulose, you have water bonding those together. So when it's heated up, that water bonding it together is driven off and it breaks apart. And then you just have individual cellulose ready to be burned and reduced. And then you'll have a very light form of carbon, which makes for perfect fast burning gunpowder. I mentioned previously that my charcoal was wet, so here's me drying it. After drying it, I go through a process of actually refining it, and this is probably one of the most important parts about making your gunpowder. So you need to have your charcoal incredibly fine, and I go through a multi-stage process of doing this. As you can see, the first thing that I do is actually take those large bits, and I put them into a mortar and pestle and grind them down into a more powder-like form doesn't matter how powdery I get them, this is just so that it fits in that small little coffee grinder that I have. If you have a, a food processor or something that can support larger volumes, just go straight and grind it up into a powder that way. So here we go, this is what our modern pestle does, okay? You take stone, you crush it over top of stone, and whatever is inside becomes powder. It even works with cocaine. Once everything was finished being ground into a coarse powder, I add it to a coffee grinder. As you can see, my charcoal is still a little bit damp because there's clumping, kind of looks a little bit like wet sand, and there's no real dust flying everywhere. In hindsight, I actually think that this was better because there's no dust everywhere and I just drive off the water later on. So now I'm taking it out and filtering through a 20 mesh. I didn't know where my 60 mesh was, which I used to use. I would recommend using a 60 mesh, but this is a 20 mesh grit. 
by the way, a 20 mesh gives 841 microns of particle size, whereas a 60 mesh will give 250 microns of particle size. These are the particles that I'm left with. I add them back to my motor and pestle because perhaps the coffee grinder couldn't actually get them. They could have been too hard. And as you can see, the difference between the two powders is very obvious. So this step is very, very important to actually filter it and grind it up. Once I finish, this is what it looks like. And you can definitely tell there's moisture in there. It's clumpy, it looks a little bit like wet sand. So I throw it in my oven and I bake off the rest of the moisture. And people say men can't cook. Look at this, okay? 200 Fahrenheit, 30 minutes, boom. Easy. After baking in the oven for a bit, it kind of looked like my grandma's ashes, which is kind of what you're going for. You see, I can pick it up and I drop it and you have a bit of like dust go everywhere. Now there's still a bit of moisture in here. I could have left it in for a bit longer, but I didn't care. Anyways, now I'm transferring it to another container and I move on to the next step. I'm being really careful here because one sneeze and grandma goes everywhere. Now this is the setup, I got all the chemicals I need, sulfur, potassium, nitrate, and charcoal. I'm not going to show you me grinding up sulfur pellets because that's pretty self-explanatory. Then just make sure you have a scale and something to mix your gunpowder in. I decided I was going to make a 200 gram batch of gunpowder at a 75-15-10 ratio, which is potassium nitrate to carbon to sulfur. So I weighed out approximately 30 grams of carbon, which ended up being 0.4 over. Next, in order to get a good mix of my sulfur with my charcoal, I'm actually going to add some excess charcoal into the coffee grinder for when I add my sulfur. This will just allow it to mix better, and I can't really do this with the potassium nitrate because I'm not comfortable blending gunpowder in a metal blender. Um, you can figure out why. Hey guys, riddle me this. What's small and yellow and can be rubbed? An Asian's co- Anyways, now that I'm hoping my video won't get taken down, Here's 20.58 grams of sulfur, which theoretically should be 20 grams. Now watch as I take great care not to spill my carefully measured sulfur as I put it into the coffee grinder with the charcoal. Now I'm grinding this together just so that it gets a better mix. I find that when I don't do this, I get small little yellow, uh, like, little pellets, I guess. Little particles, you can tell, which is sulfur that hasn't been mixed into the gunpowder. This results in better mixing and thus a better burn. Next, I move on to the potassium nitrate. This time I weigh out 153 grams of potassium nitrate, whereas the aim was 150 grams. This is fine. Extra oxidizer is completely normal. And my mix isn't completely pure either. My carbon definitely has impurities. Um, so this is fine. Anyways, now I'm doing a complete monkey move and adding all of my gunpowder to the beaker and then I'm gonna take it out and move it to something else. I don't know what I was doing but you can see everything is air float which is what you want so I guess it's good to see but also I was just being a monkey here I don't, I don't know what I was doing. And now I add all the sulfur and charcoal that have been blended together. Don't even comment on this. Just don't. You can see that 200 grams of gunpowder fills up about 250 milliliters, just so you get a perspective of its density in case you want to make it. Now, obviously, the less dense, the better, which means the lighter it is, and 
I don't know, this is how my batch turned out. Every batch is going to be different, especially depending on the type of wood that you use and how fine your grit is and things along that line. The last step is to transfer all the gunpowder now to a container where I can shake it and adequately mix it all together so that it's evenly dispersed. After the lid is capped, it's shaken vigorously for a bit, and then transferred to a Gatorade bottle. There you go, now you got your batch of gunpowder that has a pretty good burn time. Now I'm going to be using this to make some firecrackers, so I'll be releasing a video soon about me making some firecrackers with this and how you can do it too. Even though I've made explosives in the past, I'm probably only going to stick to gunpowder for firecrackers. I might make some flash powder later on, but that's a project for the future, making some perchlorates. Um, and because I'm off at university, it's hard to find time, but you know, when we're back, we'll see. Thank you for watching. See ya.